How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, I'm back, guys, with me. Hey, everybody. Listen, it's been a wild month here, okay? For some odd reason, we scheduled a total studio renovation. Actually, my entire house got renovated too, but uh, an entire studio renovation. And th the biggest week in, in the, it, you know, one of the biggest weeks in the history of professional wrestling happened. I couldn't do a show. I couldn't talk about it. Uh, we're still not complete here at all. If you're watching this live, if you listen on Sports Byline, you're going to be like, where was he? I had no studio. I had no way to do the show. We attempted it to, to do it last week, and it was total travesty. Nothing worked. So we said, you know what? We need another week to go dark. But we're back this week. If you're watching live, the studio looks very different, but it's not complete yet. This is a very, uh, this is about 60% done. Stuff's missing. Parts are missing. The wrong desk arrived. Uh, it, it's, it's a total disaster. But we are here today to talk about all the happenings in the world of professional wrestling. The latest on the Vince McMahon allegations. This is one of the most disturbing stories I have ever had to report on when it came to professional wrestling. Uh, I missed a lot of the bad years, obviously, because I started doing this in 2010. I mean, bad years with wrestling, yes, but the, the, all the terrible stuff that has happened behind the scenes. I, I've never really had to cover it to this detail. But we're going to have all the latest there. Changes to WrestleMania. Highlights from SmackDown. Very important SmackDown. And a whole lot more. Also, Collision, NXT, AEW, mercedes Monet. After this, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline with me, Andrew Zarian. Back after a month off. Three weeks off. I can't even tell. Got my producers, John, here. And, of course... Matt, our uh, producer, the guy that puts together the notes for the show, the guy that makes sure I'm not I'm not having too many glasses of wine the night before, and I show up on time to do the show. I'm gonna lean a little bit heavy on you, Matt. Okay, I'm putting a lot of pressure gotcha. on you here to guide uh -oh. me through this because there's uh -oh. so much to go through. Um, <laughs> I have not I have not had a chance to talk about this, the Vince McMahon, uh, Janelle Grant lawsuit. Uh, before we break this down, because I have to tell you, you know, when you talk about detail like this, you have to be really careful. Um, I don't want to come off insensitive. I don't want to come off like I am picking a side here. Uh, this is a heinous, heinous allegation, uh, that Janelle Grant filed in civil court against Vince McMahon to null, to dissolve the NDA. The details that have come from this. Uh, obviously, it's her side. It's what she is presenting here, right? You have to be careful when you talk about this. This is a, a tremendous legal matter that has criminal elements to it, possibly. The Southern District of New York is looking into this, which, uh, if you know anything about the SDNY and how they prosecute, they do not lose. The Southern District of New York does not lose. They have like a 99% success rate. They don't go after cases that they feel that they'll be able, they'll lose. So Janelle Grant files a lawsuit uh, accusing him of sex trafficking and, and other terrible sexual misconducts. John Laurinaitis is named in it. Vince McMahon is named in it. WWE is named in it. There's also in the 67 page report that I read every page. Unlike some other people, I read every page of it. Uh, it is really painting a disgusting picture of complete abuse of power and authority over a very fragile and uh, defeated person from from how she's presenting it. You know, her parents passed away. She was uh, on on. You know, luck was not on her side there. She was looking for a job. She was introduced to Vince. She thought she has this tremendous opportunity. And it turns out that the opportunity was essentially being sex trafficked by Vince McMahon. Allegedly, this is what is being reported. Vince has come out and denied all of this uh, adamantly and said, I, I, I forgot the wording. I don't have his exact thing in front of me, but he, he pretty much said that this was uh, totally not how it played out. 
Listen, we're going to find out, right? His side is going to present their side of this. Uh, we're going to see more of the text. Me the text messages are bonkers. Uh, the, they, regardless of uh, it, there being a criminal element to this, the text messages paint a very uh, bizarre picture of who this man is. You know, this reserved, you know, business guy that presents a lunatic on TV is, is turning out. I mean, it's, it's something that plays out on WWE TV from like 25 years ago. This is peak Vince in the, the, the 2000s on SmackDown. So uh, uh, very disturbing stuff. Brock Lesnar was also alluded to in this, in this suit, uh, which led him to not be in the Royal Rumble. He's also no longer part of WrestleMania plans. Uh, even though he was named in the suit, John Laurinaitis has now come out and said that he's also a victim uh, to Vince. I, I think a lot of people read this as, oh, you know, why is he saying that? This is self-survival. Uh, you know, I, that's going to be a very difficult thing for him to prove. But obviously, uh, they're thinking this is going federal. And some of the wording that is used in both of these suits, the, the counter... Uh, from John Laurinaitis, the, the, the counter argument from him, and also Vince's, uh, they're, they're feeling like something else is coming down here. Vince was reportedly uh, drafting and signing, and Vince reportedly drafted and signed the NDA without WWE's knowledge, which is very possible. I, I pretty much believe that. Uh, the NDAs were signed, uh, that were signed may not be enforceable because there is a criminal element to it. Vince is also under federal investigation for sexual assault allegations. This is a follow-up to the subpoena uh, in the search warrant that, happened, that got served on, in July where they took his phone and other devices. This is wild stuff. Listen, and, and this is why I said you have to be careful. I am, I am very reserved with, reserved with things like this. I want to wait and see how it plays out. There's obviously information here that we do not know. Tremendous amount of it from Janelle Grant's side, from Vince McMahon's side, from John Laurinaitis' side. Uh, it's going to be very easy to prove these things, considering everything has a digital footprint. When you're texting and when you're showing things and images are being sent to other people, whatever her claims are, uh, they're not really these willy-nilly like, oh, I don't know. Nobody else was there. Nobody else heard. These are straight out no he showed it to this one he showed it to this one this one had knowledge of this i texted with this one and the judge by the way uh i'm sorry her attorney is not some ambulance chaser she's a former retired judge from illinois that very much understands the law you're not looking at someone that's trying to get a you know a quick buck here and settle there's going to be tremendous ramifications from this for years to come do you scrub this man? You know, his legacy is done. Even if he has proven to some extent that, you know, there wasn't a criminal element and it was just this bizarre relationship. Let's say the best case, his, re his entire reputation is tarnished. Uh, it's showing how just the, the, the sickness of some of these things. Listen, I don't, I don't care what people do in their bedroom, but, you know, some of this stuff is out there, which I can't even come close to saying on, on the radio. That's how bad it is. I can't do my best Howard Stern of going, bobbing and weaving those key words <laughs> so I don't get into trouble. It's impossible. Very disappointing. You know, I think we all grew up on this. We all grew up on professional wrestling that are listening to this. We've had travesty after travesty. Things were looking better for a very long time. Industry was cleaning up. The wrestlers were a lot smarter. The drug abuse was gone. Uh, you know, it, they became real companies. And yet we see in 2024 and 2023, 2022, 2019, 2020, 2021, the most heinous of stuff could still be possibly happening. Very disappointing. What do you think, Matt? I got to tell you. So when I first read this thing, I don't know about you, but I felt like I was writing a script for a snuff film. 
or something. Yeah, really yeah. Like it was. That. I, I mean, <laughs> it, and, and you know, unfortunately, I, I feel like that'll be his defense. You know, this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this it's a gross mis, mis- exa- gross exaggeration of who I am and what what we were talking about. And because of who I've portrayed on TV for the last thirty years. This is this is the obvious wow. aftermath, which I, listen, I, I think that's such a bogus, bogus way to put it. But obviously, they're going to do everything to defend it. Yeah, there's going to be some stuff come out that we don't know about. Yeah, and, I wanted uh, to talk about uh, this because I, I, this is the first time I'm getting a chance to talk about it. And again, I want to be careful because I also want to respect uh, Janelle Grant's situation. Uh, you know, what she's accusing Vince of is heinous, heinous 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 it's the things of a deranged human being there's also the part of the um four uh unnamed executives that may play into this down the road too yeah that may play into this yeah um that's gonna come out again this is why i want to be careful with this Uh, i don't i i stay away from the heavy legal stuff because uh, words are very important here and painting the picture here more than it should be, I, I think it's irresponsible. You got to paint exactly what you have in front of you. I don't like filling in blanks here. When we come back, hopefully some more positive stuff outside of this. I want to talk about the good stuff. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. That, it's, it's, a, it's such a rough conversation to have about the Vince stuff, but obviously it's going to be a big story throughout the year. I wanted to do my best to kind of give you the basics here before we dive into other things. CM Punk injured at the Royal Rumble last week. Man, this seems to be Groundhog Day. He tore his tricep. Expected to be out four to six months. He had surgery this week. He initially said he's going to rehab it, but and a lot of people took that as he's not getting surgery, but he did go, go with the surgery. He's going to be out four to six. That's a long Minimum. time. Yeah. <clears throat> Minimum. You know? Uh, wild. Uh, you know, he can't catch a break. He looked devastated, obviously. And people said he was devastated by this. Uh, terrible, terrible to see that happen again. You know, this is his... what what? This was his third major injury, right? He broke his foot. Yeah. Then he, he tore his tricep. tricep. He tore his yeah. other tricep, and he tore this one. Some people said it has to do with doing BJJ and rolling. Interesting. Yeah, I was talking to some. They're like, oh, yeah, that happens a lot, especially in your, when you're in late 40s and 50s. A lot of guys that do BJJ end up getting these tears. I have no idea. I have no idea to prove that. I don't do BJJ, but this person does. Interesting. He announced it on Monday Night Raw. He was interrupted and attacked by Drew. And Drew had the most savage of lines where he said, I have prayed for this moment. That was great. That, that was, was one of the best so lines. good. So, mm. you know, they, they've set, it seems like they're setting up when Punk returns this for Drew, but Drew has not signed a contract. His contract ends in April. Still has not extended his contract, has not signed a contract. They're positioning him in a, in a really top area here. So... I'm curious how this plays out. If he stays or goes. But regardless, I I like this Drew. This is a much better Drew. New announced team. aggressive. Yeah. Listen, he was so much better when he was a heel. And then he became a babyface. He did that turn. And unfortunately, it didn't go the way that anybody envisioned with the pandemic. That was going to be his year. He was going to dethrone Brock Lesnar. Which he did, but it just fell flat. It fell flat. There was nobody there. They were in an empty building. At the Performance Center. Not even uh, not even in Tropicana or any, you know, they didn't have the LEDs. They were just in the Performance Center with nothing. Yep. Nobody imagined it would have become what it did. New commentary team for Raw. Love this. Pat McAfee and Michael Cole are the new team. I love how Pat has no clue what's happening. <laughs> and I say that in the good way. I, 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 it's, it, it comes off like... It's refreshing, right? It's very refreshing. refreshing mm-hmm. Very yeah. refreshing. And... I said this when they were when Pat and Michael Cole were doing commentary the previous time. It Michael Cole's like a new man. He's a totally a new man here. Uh, he feels energized and he and he really enjoys doing commentary with Pat. 
the other thing here is, you know, for all the, the crap that Michael Cole has gotten over the years, he is fantastic. He really is. When you see the other commentators that they've gone through, you know, Kevin Patrick was let go. Uh, numerous other commentators have attempted this. It is a very difficult job to have. And the fact that he came after Jim Ross, you know, the greatest oh, of yeah. all time, you know, in his peak, nobody was better than Jim Ross. You know, you had the likes of Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. Tony's still doing it. Jim is still doing it. You know, those are big shoes to fill and to satisfy the audience. Michael Cole did a job. You know, he did it. And it, it's nice to yeah. see him be refreshed and revived by having a partner here that he enjoys working with. Corey Gray's wait. He, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, and he uh, um, withstood all the Vince stuff, going through the Vince in his ear all those years. And yeah. now he's probably like, oh, this is a, such a relief. Well, that's like John in my ear. Weight off the shoulder. Yeah. That's like John in my he's ear happy. giving me cues and yelling at me. You guys have no idea the abuse I deal with here. Just screaming oh, at do. me. <laughs> Just start screaming like a lunatic. Mm. And it, but you know what it is? He, he, and, and what he does, he, he tells me to mispronounce people's names. Pat McAfee. Tell Pat McAfee. I'm like, that, John, that's, it's Pat McAfee. I don't know. His voice becomes like that, too, when he's yelling at me. Corey Graves and Wade Barrett to be the new SmackDown team. Um, this is interesting because neither one of those guys is a play-by-play -play guy. Graves has been promoted to play by play. I mean, Graves knows moves. He, he's another really good commentator. So I'm curious, you know, how this is going to play out over the next couple months. But nice I and you, refreshing. I got to tell you, on SmackDown this week, I didn't even realize. I did, it took me a minute to wait. Wait, it, it sounded no, normal to me. It sounded natural. So that's a good thing. Yeah. The fact that I didn't notice it right away. That's great. That's, you know, I, I feel bad that Kevin Patrick had to go, but I just, it didn't click for me. No, it was off. And, and you could tell, really, when you have someone that is not a wrestling. Like, they didn't grow up on wrestling the way that a lot of these guys did. And they enjoyed. You know, for Pat's case, you know, Pat, like, loves wrestling. But he's not a, he, he's not following the story every week. And I thought it was nice to see that. SmackDown results. We're going to go into that next. But I want to I wanna take time to talk about. Uh, the fallout here from CM Punk because a lot of the he was going to go with Seth and Seth is hurt and with Seth banged up we don't know who his opponent's going to be now Punk's out of the Wrestlemania and he was going to headline it he was getting probably night one it sounds that way yep. and it just wasn't in the cards again for that man this is the most baby face he's ever been in his life because you feel bad for him. He left AEW in, in the worst of ways. Oh, see? I don't know if you guys could hear that. See, he's, he's, he's mocking me now in my, in my ear. John is very upset he left AEW. Well, I'm going to talk about that in another day. On how we became the, the de facto expert in all CM Punk situations from hosting the show, producing a show for Brian and producing this show. He's become a wrestling expert. This is a man that never watched it, and now he's so committed to this. It's actually amazing to see a 40-year-old kind of get into it in late stage in his life. I'm loving it. Uh, but, you know, he missed out on this opportunity. Now the big question is, and we're going to talk about SmackDown, uh, what happens? What happens next? Well, let's go into this. Logan Paul kicked off the show and was interrupted by Kevin Owens on SmackDown. Kevin Owens defeated Austin Theory in a 10-minute match. Tyler Bate, Pete Dunne defeated Umberto and Angel. Umberto and Angel. Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Phoenix and Pretty Deadly. Joaquin Wild. Joaquin Wild. What did I say? Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix. <laughs> no, that's that. Joaquin Phoenix is not. No. No. Wrong, wrong Joaquin. Great actor, though. Joaquin Phoenix. He was... River Phoenix's brother. Uh, they'll face off in a uh, in a four way on Raw uh, for the right to face Judgment Day at Elimination Chamber. Bailey and Damage Control. Bailey was, was supposed to segment. choose Rhea. This was a segment, man. <clears throat> Bailey was supposed to choose Rhea, but talked about how she noticed damage. How she noticed Damage Control had been talking about her behind her back. Then she questioned if EO has changed since the Kabuki Warriors showed up. This led to a group attack. 
She fought them off with a pipe and declared she would face EO at WrestleMania. This is the first time I can remember, I don't know about you, that we had a smart baby face. We had a really she, smart baby face. It, she, she didn't act dumb. She, she noticed the situation and she was proactive. This was good. I liked this. this was, when is the last time she was a baby face? She hasn't been a baby face in uh, years since, since the pandemic. The stuff. And if since you the know, pandemic. She's growing her hair out. Yeah. Yep. Before the pandemic. Yeah. I believe it was before it. Yeah. And then she went on that really great run during the pandemic as a heel. Um, but yeah, so I'm almost wondering if she's going to pull out the hugger routine. Um, at at Mania. Mania. Bring out Izzy. I mean, I don't know. Have her come out with Izzy. <laughs> That'd be interesting. That'd be but, great. She's wrestling. Izzy's a wrestler now. Did you know that? She is. It's, yes. Yeah, it's oh, so yeah. impressive. Oh, yeah. It's great mm. to see. Uh, I, I thought this was really cool. Very much enjoyed this segment. You know, they're building Bailey up really. You know, the right person won that Rumble, and I hope she wins that title at WrestleMania. That's a great moment. People are going to leave very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, Lastly, the match might be might over deliver because those two can go mm -hmm. lashley's group faced off with final testament this led to bfab joining lashley uh to counter uh scarlet all right they're doing something here tiffany shatton defeated mitchin 745 tiffany's impressive huh she is one of the, okay so this is one of the first um examples of the nil and uh collegiate stars really starting to you're starting to see them come out there's a couple down in nxt that are going to really shine this year um she's one uh, of those oba femi yeah oba yeah she's the beginning of she's one of the first yeah oba femi um of uh, that guy is awesome on in nxt and uh the girl um i can't think of her name right now Kalani Jordan, yeah, uh, another gymnast. Those, th there's some stars down there, man. Athletes bond that are just going to be able to shine. They're going to really outshine some of the older people, but still, it's going to be awesome going yeah, forward. Yeah, she she was a gymnast, uh, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, very impressive. Uh, you know, just great look. Uh, and I think there's going to be good stuff for her. Cody bloodline confrontation. We're going to go into this after the break here because I want to spend time because this is when the internet lost their minds. And still losing it, by the way. <laughs> and still losing it. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I had a great Friday. So when I watched this, I watched it with a lot of positivity. Okay? So I saw this go in a very different way than most people. And I'm going to explain that after the break. And we're going to break that down for you guys because... I don't hate it as much as other people. I understand the, Co you know, Cody got screwed here. But we're going to talk about it after the break. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. My producers are sick. They're out of their minds, both of them. Really deranged people. Saying some really lewd things to me <laughs> before I'm starting the show. Let's talk about this. Cody Rhodes, Bloodline. This was the segment that drove everybody into insanity. Again, I watched this. I had a great Friday. I, I was having the best time. I'm, I'm in my living room. I'm watching this. I'm having a glass of wine. My wife and I are hanging out. The kids are around. It was a nice Friday. So I watched this very differently. I watched this as a fan. I didn't watch this as an analyst. Cody says, I, I, let me, one criticism here. I thought the way that it was done was wonky. OK, I did. I, I didn't find it to be the cleanest of reasons. Why he would give up this opportunity. Cody it says he will, it was sure. a little convoluted and, and I think it was too. It was a, it was like a compromise moment. They were trying to figure out how to make everybody look good. And sometimes when you do that, it doesn't happen. Cody says he will take everything away from Roman, including the title that has the lineage that has the lineage of the title his father once fought for. OK. But he said it won't be at WrestleMania. He said he wants to take him apart piece by piece. And here comes The Rock. The Rock's music hits. Cody and him give a hug. He, he whispers something to Cody. Cody laughs a little, leaves the ring. And the final moment of SmackDown was Dwayne and Roman face to face in that ring. Then it was announced 
on that there will be a live stream on social media Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. This will likely be where they make The Rock and Roman official for WrestleMania, Io Sky Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship in the in the first match uh in the first it's match been that's announced. been been announced, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that that was a I little I have a convoluted. theory for you. Okay, give me the theory. I have a theory. Give me. I got a quick theory. So a lot, I haven't heard anybody say this. A lot of people are assuming that it's just going to be for the title and then it's going to be a foregone conclusion who's going to win. Um, what if that whole th- exchange that Cody and Rock did where they were whispering each other's ears, the sweet nothings they were telling each other was The Rock telling him, hey, you know, I don't want the title. You go for the title. I just want the uh, head of the table title. Yeah, but how do and they do that? They do two men. He, he wrestles twice. I don't think he's going to wrestle twice. I just think that, hey, I'm not going to fight for the title at WrestleMania. That's yeah, you. but That's see, I don't you. like. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, there's no, there's no good way. It's about It's such a it, convoluted really. way yeah. out because uh, here's why. Okay, the greatest prize in the business is that title. Why would anybody not want it? Because remember, mm-hmm. with the title comes money and more stuff and. You know, this is a man that's a Hollywood star, and he's now on the board of directors. Why wouldn't he want it all? As a competitive professional wrestler. I, you know, I, I thought the way that it's done is convoluted. I, you know, it, it's unfortunate because they had to do, the, they, they had the plan for Roman to hold that title forever. They were have been attempting to do The Rock and Roman for two years. This maybe three now. Do you remember when we first reported this? When I when I met up with some people from there, and they told me it was it was like happening. Yeah. It was about a year and a half ago, maybe a and little then, more. And I, then the Rock went on McAfee's show and com- pretty much confirmed what you would report. Yeah, WWE was here. The they were doing right. something. Yeah. I think they might have been in Brooklyn, and I mm-hmm. met up with a couple friends from there, and I was told that this was something that was happening, that they were working on this heavily, and that. I guess it had to have been, I, God, I, I can't remember. But, I mean, The Rock, Dwayne pretty much went on TV and confirmed all this and said, yeah, they were working on it. It was just they, they were far apart and creative. There was an issue there. Now is the time. I think Dwayne's Hollywood uh, mishaps from last year have played a big part in this. It's now allowed him some time. The XFL is merged. This is a tremendous distraction for the company to to kind of throw in front of you to forget about Vince. The, I couldn't see any other way of not doing it. This this is, and I understand a lot of people want Cody to have his moment. I, I get that, and I want him to have the moment too, but this is not a professional wrestling company that is going to adhere to the traditions and to the to the uh to the steps that you must do. Right? Guy works hard for you all year round. You reward him. He's your main guy. He's one of your top draws on a weekly basis. You reward him. It's not that company anymore. Don't be shocked when Logan Paul wins this title. Don't be shocked when Bad Bunny is going on tour as the world champion. I'm not saying I know anything about that happening. I'm saying the entire trajectory of this company changed when they sold it. You don't have... Vince McMahon, and I know we spoke about it in the first time, but for some credit, we don't have Vince McMahon that has been engulfed in the professional wrestling promotion business his entire adult life. We have Ari Emanuel, a, a, a manager, an agent that has represented top stars in, in, in Hollywood and the world. He's thinking, what is the biggest thing that we could do? What's the most entertaining thing we could do? And that's obviously the Rock and Roman. Two separate ways of thinking, guys. And I get it. I'm a professional wrestling fan. I understand why people would be upset. I, I want to see Cody have his moment. But you have an opportunity to do the Rock and Roman. And you're going to say, no, I'm sorry. I'm not taking it at the biggest show that we could possibly put on. That would be insane. That would, uh, I get it. I understand, again, I understand why people want Cody in that match. And maybe they figure out a way to do it. But you have numerous things. You have Roman's record that they are very adamant on. 
whether or not he drops it to The Rock or he beats The Rock and then he drops it at the next show to Cody or he breaks Hogan's record up until September of 1,400 and some odd days. 1492, Hogan sailed the ocean blue. <laughs> what is it, 1470? Something like that. 14, yeah, something like that. I think, it, I think it's sev- September 14th, I do believe, is when that would change. September 14th. Mm. Oh, no. Here we go. John the Heel. John the Heel. Listen, very different eras. Very different character. Again, we're talking about the character. We're not talking about the integrity of the man. Uh, very different times. Hogan was a bleach blonde, jacked up man with hot dog skin. You will never find that again. You see that man, you think it's Hulk Hogan. He's a big star. You know what? Roman has that ability too. You see that man, he's a big star. Cody, he's a star. You see him, he's somebody. The Rock, obviously, he's somebody. I think this is going to be very interesting. When you look at the history books and you look at Vince's dad, who started his reign was Bruno, right? Who ended it was Backlund, essentially. Who began Vince's was Ho- Hogan. Who ended it was Roman. And now we're going into the next whatever phase. It's interesting stuff. I, I, I'm into this. I, and I, I think Roman and The Rock are going to have a tremendous sports entertainment-esque main event that people are going to eat up it's going to remind you a lot of the hogan uh rock face it's it that is exactly what they want to do and and it it has been said in that way that they want that and i'm telling you at the end when the rock is doing the old man hogan handshake holding his gut that's when you'll know when they did it or the crowd turns and they do a double turn again that's something interesting too because guess what a lot of that crowd is is not going to want to see Dwayne win the title. They're going to be adamant that Cody got screwed. Very interesting stuff here. And a lot of fun stuff. NXT Vengeance Day coming up today, 8 p.m. on Peacock. NXT champion Ela Dragunov defends against Trick Williams. This is Trick Williams' story. I think Trick should win this title and bring Dragunov up, up to the main roster. NXT Women's Champion Tyre Valkyrie defends against Roxanne Perez. NXT North American Champion Oba Femi, very impressive, defends against Dragon Lee. Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Finals, Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams against Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin. Braun Breaker made his debut in the Royal Rumble. He's an impressive looking dude, man. He, he, he is a young Scotty Steiner. It's wild. <laughs> he took Brock Lesnar's spot in the Rumble. No DQ match, uh, Dijak and Joe Gacy, six-person mixed tag match, The Family versus OTM. Starts at 8 p.m. Collision last night. Did you watch Collision? I did, I did. Uh, I, you Brian know, Keith dude, is my, is dude, my new hero. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we got a couple of minutes here. I want to I touch on Brian Keith. Uh, I told you, man, I love a cowboy gimmick. He's the bandit. His pants are all the way up to his chest. <laughs> love it him and Eddie Kingston put on a great performance I love that Brian Keith got in, uh, introduced as being all elite he was given a contract what'd you think of the Danielson match oh that was fantastic I was unfortunately doing stuff I got someone interrupted me but the, what I watched was a um, clinic as far as technical wrestling it was great very 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 fun i like the cmlo guys being there it's been it's yeah. been interesting you know uh in this, it's different in this feud this feud with the black bull combat club it's going to be awesome i think somebody brought up to me they're like oh another another useless match right like just to appease danielson i'm like you're complaining about once in a lifetime scenario pro wrestling matches with great wrestlers you know, wrestling was amazing. like, uh, uh, like yeah. somebody, there were compl- like, there were so many complaints that edge faced Suzuki a couple weeks ago. And I'm like, you will never see that again. It, and why not? Why not give that? Because there is a portion of the audience that wants to see stuff like that. Not everything is a story. You know, I love good wrestling. I want bonkers wrestling. I love it. I'm not really always looking for a story. So I thought this was great. The CMLL thing has been great too. Hook defeated the outrunners. Love that tag team. 
Tony Schiavone interviewed Mark Briscoe, who was interrupted by the House of Black on screen, and they threatened to make Briscoe disappear. Serena Deeb made a return. Red Velvet. And who did Red Velvet face? Vervixen. Vervixen. Vert Vixen. Vert Vixen. I couldn't tell if you, you, you spelt that wrong or not. <laughs> no, FTR, FTR uh, and Daniel Garcia defeated the, um, the TNT champion. Christian, Killswitch, and Nick Wayne. All right. Fun show. Next week's next week's Dynamite. We got a minute here. Tony Khan has a big announcement. I think it has to do with banking. I think that that announcement has to do with banking. Listen, Tony's gonna, a big finance. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very wealthy man. He knows what banks to, to do with banking with. His financial institutions that he works with. Statement? You could, it could, be city, live on it could be city, it could be city group. <laughs> it could be chase JP Morgan. It could be TD. He's just going to talk about banking guys. Nothing, nothing else. Chris Jericho, Takeshita, AW tag champs, uh, big bill and Ricky against Sting and Darby, John Moxley, Daniel Garcia, uh, Daniel Garcia, Daniel Bryan, Claudio. Versus Mystico, Volador Jr., and who, who's the other one? Hencherico, the guy. Hencherico, I'm so uh, sorry. My, my screen yeah. is frozen here. Uh, mm -hmm. And women's world title eliminator. Tony Storm versus Red Velvet with Deanna Perrazzo on the outside doing commentary. This is all fun stuff. I'm looking forward to this. Big story coming up, though. This mercedes Monet stuff. It's happening. We're going to find out this week. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. It was good to be back this week. Still got a lot of work to do in the studio. The shot's off. The lighting is off. I'm a little off. The desk is too small. I got my Harlem Heat action figure here with me. All my tchotchkes are missing. So it's a whole thing here. But I'm glad to be back. A lot of wrestling. A lot of good wrestling to talk about coming up in the coming weeks. Obviously, Tony Khan's big announcement will happen. A lot of people already anticipate they know what it is. Uh, I'm going to say you're probably right. Uh, there's also a lot of other... You know, there was one weird story, that, and I got to ask about this numerous times. And if AEW is running the Garden this year, I can tell you 100% certainty because A, my relationship with that building, and two, people I've spoken to uh, they are not running the garden. I don't know where that came from. I got to ask. I, I, I actually got asked uh, more than plenty <laughs> in one day. So I guess there was some sort of rumbling happening. Uh, they're not running the garden, but I will have an announcement uh, in a couple of weeks. I just want to confirm it. But there is something very cool that they will be doing for me, just for me, maybe a couple of other people. I'm going to talk about that maybe next week on the show. This week, I'll be back with Garrett Gonzalez on Tuesday with, with a live episode, or we're live, pal. Matt Men returns on Friday. And we have a big announcement from Matt Men coming on Monday night during Raw. Follow us on Twitter, Matt Men Podcast on Twitter. You can follow me at Andrew Zarin, and you'll, you'll find out what that is. Some of you guys are going to be thrilled. Some of you guys are not so happy. The detractors will not be happy. But everybody else will be really happy. We'll see you all next week on Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. See you next time.